This video is about making sense of magnetic declination. Magnetic declination is something that you are going to need to worry about if you're planning on collecting data or analyzing data with a compass, uh, structural data with a compass. Magnetic declination is the angle between true north and magnetic north. And what we mean by that is that our planet has a geographic north pole. So the geographic north pole is the place where our planet's rotational axis intersects the surface. So right here is the geographic north pole. That also be, it's uh, called true north. But we also have a magnetic field and the place where that magnetic field intersects the surface is the magnetic north and south poles. So, draw a magnetic, magnetic field. So the magnetic north pole is actually offset from the geographic north pole. And today we're gonna abbreviate magnetic north MN. So you can see that there's this distance between magnetic north and geographic north. And we refer to that angle when we measure it from wherever we are on Earth as being uh, magnetic declination. So for example, if I were to pick a point right here on Earth, we're drawing on a sphere, so again, these lines are gonna be curved. So from this point to these two, this angle is my magnetic declination. So that's the angle between true north and magnetic north. And from this perspective, magnetic north is gonna be west of true north, or you could read it as true north is to the east of magnetic north. So let's do another um, example down here, just conceptually. We've got again the sphere of Earth, but this time I've reoriented it so we're not on a tilt. So there's our true north. And magnetic north for us um, is 80 degrees north, 107 west. So this is somewhere in the Canadian Arctic um, in North America. And you, you need to remember that since you're dealing with a compass, the needle on a compass is um, magnetized, or it's, sometimes it's sitting on top of a magnet in a Brenton. And that magnet is always going to want to align with the magnetic uh, field. So that needle, the needle on the Brenton, is always going to point toward magnetic north. So if I'm up here on this, uh, this little earth, if I'm holding my Brenton, the needle on my Brenton is always pointing toward magnetic north. Okay, so these are just some latitude lines to keep us, keep us oriented. There's true north. Magnetic north, again, is gonna be just south of that because it's at about 80 degrees north. Magnetic north. Um, and so let's think about what might be the case in New York or Seattle. So I'm gonna draw maybe zero degrees longitude. Just do a dashed line, so that's zero degrees. New York might plot um, and again, this is not to scale somewhere in here. So there's New York. Uh, and let's plot Seattle. Go way over here. This is not to scale at all. And there's Seattle. So in New York, if we were to draw lines just like this, there's the direction to true north. There's our direction to magnetic north. In New York, magnetic north is west of true north, okay? And then that angle would be your magnetic declination. So let's try it for Seattle. If we're in Seattle, again, we have arcs because we're moving across a sphere. Um, again, we have a magnetic declination. They're not aligned. And so that angle right there is our magnetic declination. Magnetic north is east of true north. So if I'm in New York holding a Brenton, my angle or my needle on my Brenton is pointing that direction. And if I'm in Seattle holding a Brenton, my needle is pointing in that direction. So they're both pointing toward magnetic north. Um, and these angles can, can get pretty big. In New York, for example, um, that angle is 13 degrees. So that's 13 degrees west. Um, you'll also see people write that as negative 13 degrees. In Seattle, 
magnetic declination is 15 to 16 degrees east. In my area, my field area, it's 15. And you'll see people write that as um, a positive 15. Okay, so remember though that the needle is always pointing toward magnetic north. And this is where I think most people get confused. So I'm just gonna do a visual example of it. Um, let's say you're holding a Brunton uh, and your needle is pointed toward that E, okay? You and your Brunton, so your, your sight, you are looking this way. You and your Brunton are what? Facing east, right? because that's what you're reading off of your Brunton. You and your Brunton are facing east. Your needle is facing or pointing magnetic north, all right? It is never, um, it is never pointed in the direction that you are pointed in unless you are also facing magnetic north. And so luckily, because we want everyone to be able to compare their data, we want to be able to use other people's data, we need everybody to adjust their Bruntons so that um, the needle, even though it's going to be pointed magnetic north, magnetic north is going to not be zero on the Brunton. So zero on the Brunton, we hope to mean true north. Um, and so we need to adjust our Bruntons for that. Now on your Brunton, you're gonna notice that there's a little pin um, it's like a little needle looking thing inside your Brunton. That's called your index pin. And east and west are flipped. If you wanna know why, you can watch my other video on that. Um, and then I've just drawn out the beginning of an azimuth compass. So we've got 10, 20, 30 going to one side and 350, 340 and back down going to the other. This uh, rim of numbers is called a graduated circle. You also see it called a dial, things like that. And the reason why we call it that is because that adjusts. So on your Brunton, on this Brunton, for example, this little metal piece is my index pin. And this stage of numbers around the outside is my graduated circle. On the side of your Brunton, You'll notice that there's a little spot for a flathead screwdriver. Pennies also fit here, pocket knives. Um, I use pen caps, but you can take that and move it. And as you move it, not the pen, but the graduated circle moves. So the graduated circle on your Brunton is going to move, not your index pen. Your index pen always stays still. So let's talk about how you'll wanna adjust your Brunton depending on where you are. And we're going to do this by working through the example of uh, Seattle and New York. All right. So again, in New York, magnetic north is west of true north by about 13 degrees. So on this little sphere that I've got over here, I'm gonna label this as being true north, this is magnetic north, and there's that angle in between them with magnetic north west of true north. Now what we really wanna do, because our compass needle is always gonna to point toward magnetic north, we'd really like to be able to read that as north 13 west. And so that way, the magnetic north isn't going to be zero on our Brunton. Now it's going to be north 13 west. We also want to read true north as zero degrees. Like that's what we would like to read on our Brunton. Okay, so let's draw what we want our Brunton to look like. I'm gonna draw my sight. I'm gonna draw a terrible Brunton, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, if you're working with azimuth, north 13 west is 345. So what we'd like is for our needle to line up with our site at 345 north. And zero is going to be to the left. Okay, what that also means is that if we were to redraw this 
and allow our magnetic north pointing needle to point to zero, 345 would be over here by our, um, our index pen, sorry. There's our index pen, there's 345. So now magnetic north has this angle uh, between that and true north on our Brunton. Okay, so to do that, what you would do is you would take your pen, your uh, penny, whatever you're using, and you would rotate your uh, dial or your graduated circle until you get to like around 345 or I guess since it's north 13 west, it would be um, 347. So I'm gonna adjust this. 347, okay. And now my Brunton is ready to collect measurements in New York. Okay. Um, and I mean, I'm sure that you can, you can memorize ways of doing this, but I, I don't do really well with memorization. I really like to think through what I'm doing and, and know for sure that I'm doing it right. So let's think about Seattle. Here's Seattle, true north, Magnetic north, so in Seattle now, magnetic north is east of true north by about 15 degrees. So really what I'd like to be able to do is when my Brunton needle is pointing toward magnetic north, I'd love to be able to read that as north 15 degrees east. And ideally I'd read true north as zero degrees. So I'm gonna draw what I'd like to see on my Brunton. So again, there's my site, there's my index pen, which is always aligned with my site. And when that needle is pointing this way, aligned with the site, I wanna see north 15 east. So on a, an azimuth compass, it would just read 15. And now if I do that, zero is going to be over here. And you know, here's 350, for example. And what that means too is if I think about when my needle is gonna to point to zero, my sight, my index pin are gonna be in this direction. Here's 15, here's zero. And so that's the direction that my um, needle is gonna point. So right now, this Brunton is pointing to true north and this one is pointing to magnetic north. The difference is how I'm going to be able to read it. So here I'm going to be able to read magnetic north as north 15 east, and I'm going to really be able to read true north as zero. Okay, and you would just um, reverse the way that you turn the pin on the Brunton. So here I take my Brunton, I'm going to move the pin around, the index pin. Um, it can take a minute sometimes. It, I chose places with bigger declinations than what we have in Georgia. Okay, so there we go. Now this Brunton is ready to collect data in Seattle. All right, just a, a quick review of um, a note to make and how we actually write this. Negative magnetic north refers to a west. So a magnetic north being X degrees west of true north, and a positive magnetic north is to the east, as in magnetic north is Y degrees east of true north. And I, I know that, again, I know you can memorize this, and that's fine, but I'm just, I'm more of a visual person, and so I would always rather draw myself a little picture and write what I want to be able to read magnetic north as. I want to be able to read magnetic north, for example, in Athens, Georgia, um, as north 6 east. And you will never screw up setting your Brunton if you're using that and drawing yourself a picture. Okay. Thanks, y'all.